No, this is the section where I give 10 tips on um, particular aspects of virtual pitching. We've covered the general things, which still apply, of course, in a, a virtual pitch as well as a physical pitch. But now we come on to specific uh, virtual pitching uh, techniques, problems, uh, opportunities. And the first one is technical checks. It, it kind of, it's kind of common sense, but you know, just make sure the technical setup is okay. So make sure you've downloaded the software and probably the updated version of the software. Um, it doesn't happen on Zoom, I don't think, not yet, but um, I think we've all had the experience of logging onto a Skype call and then Skype says, you don't have the most up-to-date um, version and we're gonna update your, your software now. And 10 minutes later, you apologize for being late for the call. So, you know, get the updates, make sure you, you've got the, the software and the updated software and it's ready to go. Um, the other one is to make sure you have a good connection. You might need to move to somebody else's office or home where they have stronger and more reliable Wi-Fi, for example. Um, so again, it's just one of those things that goes wrong. Um, in a way it can't be helped, but what I'm saying is maybe it can be helped um, if you know, we lose connection. You know, we don't want to be apologizing all the time, so let's get it right. And the other thing that I've learned to do, because I have pretty good Wi-Fi, but occasionally it's wobbly, is that I actually use a, a hardwire connection. So I use an Ethernet connection directly into my computer so that I'm not risking Wi-Fi uh, weaknesses of, of any kind. So it's really important that we get as much as possible ready in advance so that uh, we don't get those technical glitches. And the other one, and I experienced this this morning, um, 30 minutes before, um, we just need to get log on early. Uh, just make sure it's rather, it's better to be there waiting than to assume you can log on one minute before and then something goes wrong. So log on early, that's often the case if you are pitching, uh, but it's just, again, common sense, get in, make sure everything's working, set yourself up, etc. So the technical checks is the, the first one. The second point is about backgrounds. Um, and it's very interesting seeing the backgrounds people use. And nowadays, of course, because of COVID-19 and on the news, um, the people who would be on the news programs are now working from home. Um, we get in interviews or the news people interview professors and health experts and all kinds of people uh, in a virtual way, which is you know, exciting. That's the world we now live in, especially during the pandemic. But you also see people's backgrounds and you see their living rooms, you see their kitchens, you see the kids coming in, you see that strange picture on the wall. And these can be distracting. So we need to think about the background that we want to have for the purpose of our pitch. And it might be better to use an office background rather than a home background. Um, just whatever's appropriate, I think. So. Uh, you can create an office background, even if you're working from home or in an untidy house, you know, you can have a panel or board or just use a, a blank wall or s create something that's um, just a better and more suitable background uh, for the occasion. And it's also possible to use virtual backgrounds on Zoom, certainly. And I'm, that's what I'm doing now. So. Uh, you're not seeing my horrible wallpaper behind me in my home office here in England. You're seeing a virtual background that also acts as slides. But, you know, I have others uh, for different purposes. I could give you a, a nice scene of um, the part of England I, I live in. Um, depending, I wouldn't do that for a business pitch unless it was relevant. So you could have your logos behind you. You could have something relevant. So... Simply, you know, think about, think about your background. Then lighting. Again, we've all seen it, even with, you know, professional people, politicians who are talking professionally, but their studio for the Zoom call is not set up professionally. And they're sitting with a window behind them. And they're, we can't see them because it's a silhouette. And of course, this is what you do when you're interviewing somebody deliberately um, who wants to stay anonymous some ex-criminal or somebody who's a victim. Um, so it's quite spooky and uh, it's just not good. It, and it's, we can fix it. 
So think about the lighting. You don't need to be an extra expert photographer or filmmaker, but you know, just sit with the light in the right direction. Uh, if there's a problem with the lighting, fix it. Use a, you know, use a, a lamp or a shared a window or do whatever you need to do to get the lighting right. Uh, so in other words, set up as you would in a professional film or photo studio, just to make sure the lighting is good, you're seen clearly, etc. Just looks more professional. And then the camera angle. Um, that's an interesting one as well. And it kind of amuses me and annoys me at the same time. When I'm watching people on TV uh, who are telling us important stuff, you know, about the pandemic perhaps, but I'm seeing um, the, the ceiling. And, you know, top tip is, nobody wants to see your ceiling you know it's just a bit odd to be looking at people they don't want to see your ceiling and they certainly don't want to see your nostrils so please don't sort of sit ab you know, above the camera and talk down into it um it's just <laughs> it's just weird and it doesn't make the audience feel comfortable and it's working against us so common sense sensible stuff but we just have to practice, I guess, and get used to this and become more slick and more professional. So um, I would say, um, you know, think about how that works for the audience. Don't look down at them. And uh, the final point is ideally um, look at the, um, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, yeah, try and make it eye level. So it might be that you have to put your laptop on a, a stand or, or use a, a webcam and a tripod so that you're, you're speaking to people at eye level. You're not talking down at them or looking up at them. Um, again, it just creates a more natural and subliminal rapport uh, with, the, um, you know, with the audience. Um, moving on quickly then to eliminating distractions. Um, again, we've all seen it, it's happened to us maybe, when the mobile phone goes off during an interview or a, a pitch. Uh, switch off your phones, switch off notifications so that you don't get those bleeps and whistles and pings, whether it's on your phone or somebody else's phone or even on your, your laptop. So, you know, I've turned off WhatsApp on my laptop because otherwise every time my family or friends send me something, I get a distracting little sound. So, you know, make it easy for yourself. Eliminate distractions. Um, find a quiet room. Again, common sense. Uh, move into a different room if necessary. Decide to use somebody else's house instead of your own if it's a crucial pitch. So find somewhere that's quiet and minimize the noise. So you might have to just use some, uh, you know, furniture to buffer some sounds that are coming from next door or move into a different room. So eliminate those distractions. I think um, the distractions can be children as well. I'm not saying you should eliminate your children, but maybe you can you know, fix it so they don't sort of burst in um, during your pitch. And a simple thing and a kind of cool professional thing is to use an on-air sign. So you just put on the door of your, your back office or living room on air, please do not disturb. And so, you know, it might just stop people forgetting that you're doing a crucial pitch and bursting in and asking, do you want a cup of tea or something like that? So, you know, just think ahead and make sure you're not distracted because it could really throw your pitch, distract you, trip you up and you lose the pitch. Dress code, um, dress appropriately. That's common sense for any pitch. And it goes also with, um, you know, a virtual pitch. We need to dress appropriate for the occasion. If it's very, very informal, uh, you know, you could deliberately choose to use a t-shirt and go unshaven if that's appropriate. It, but more likely for a professional pitch, you would want to go in your sort of business gear. It might not be the full suit and tie, but it might be like, you know, I tend to use a, a open neck shirt and, and suit. Um, or whatever is appropriate. So think about how you come across in the way that people see you, uh, the way you dress. Now, 
I saw an amusing video the other day um, about a spoof product where they're selling suits that only go down to your chest. In other words, you know, you can look really smart in the top half, whereas the bottom half, you're still wearing your pajamas or your trainers or your tracksuit bottoms or nothing. <laughs> Who knows? And it's, it's tempting and it's cheeky and I've probably done it myself, uh, not wearing nothing, but <laughs> what I have done is put a smart shirt on top while still wearing my jeans and trainers. Um, it can be done, but you know, think about how you look. But actually, what I would advise uh, is to dress up completely in the way that you would for a real pitch. And so I've done that today. Today, you can see that I've got a jacket and a shirt, but I'm not wearing shorts or uh, jeans. I'm actually wearing my full suit and even my best shoes that you, you're not going to see. Why? Is that pointless? No, because for, in that way, it's about me. I just feel more in professional mode. Is what I do before a conference speech or a, a pitch or a big event. You know, I dress this way and just feeling in the same way, feeling the same clothes actually switches us into perhaps a more professional mode or a, a different way of expressing ourselves. So it's worth considering getting fully dressed up, even for a virtual pitch. Um, and A couple of more things. Uh, next one is about eye contact. And in a, a real, you know, physical uh, pitch, we're in a situation where we can establish a rapport with our audience, probably by shaking hands with the panel or the judges at the beginning. That's cool. We can't do that, of course. And then as we're talking, we're making eye contact with them and ideally with each of them. And we can become quite professional as presenters in making sure that our eye contact you know, is working well. Now, in the virtual pitch, it's a particular problem. And to establish that eye contact, to make that real engagement, we have to look at the camera, not at the image of the other people that we see lower down on our, our laptop screen. I've been trying to do it as much as possible during this webinar presentation. And you can see that right now I'm looking at the camera and hopefully there's a direct eye contact. Whereas in other occasions, I might be looking at the controls or just at the, the picture of the audience. And although it's only a few centimeters away, the loss of eye contact is loss of eye contact. Eye contact is, is binary. It's there or it's not there. So bear that in mind. And one option is just to have a, a little photograph or a little image of a smiley that you pin next to your camera that prompts you to look at that smiling face rather than looking at the screen of all the people um, in the panel. So it's just a, a little trick there and of course the nearer that you go to the camera the more obvious it is. So if I'm so close you can see that on the one hand I'm looking at the, the camera and, and now I'm looking down and all of a sudden it's a big, big difference. Whereas you might just get away with it if you're sitting much further back, um, as I switch my eye from the camera to the screen, it might be less noticeable. So that's a consideration. And although it's quite engaging to sit very close um, so that they get you know, the full view of you, um, there's the eye contact issue which, uh, which is exacerbated and uh, goes wrong more badly if you're very close and you're not looking at the camera. So uh, that's worth bearing in mind. A couple more points, hand gestures. Even in normal presentations, we see people using their hands instinctively, but without a purpose. And one of the things I've learned, um, or trying to learn anyway, as I give more presentations and speeches, is not to flap my hands about. In fact, if you can keep your hands by your side or maybe holding something, it stops the, you waving your hands about in, in a way that can be either just meaningless or worse, can be distracting. Now, in a way, it's a blessing that when you're seeing my head and shoulders, you're not seeing my hand movements, but that's, so that's okay. But some people still do them and what happens is as they're talking with these 
uh, random hand movements, they keep flashing up onto the screen or not. So it's the worst of both worlds. They're not getting any sense from them, but they're getting the distraction of them. So I would say avoid you know, those hand gestures and certainly um, keep them off the screen, unless, of course, the hand gestures are crucial. If you need to be saying something, if you want to make a point by saying, we need to think, or you know, this is a secret, if you want to use them, then that's fine, but do hand gestures deliberately, which is a tip for any presentation. And if they are crucial and they need to be seen, because that's the way you speak or you're doing something, uh, you're demonstrating something, then you, know, you could sit a lot further back so that you make sure that on the one hand, I can tell you this, and on the other hand, I can tell you that, or the close connection between myself and my customers or whatever meaningful hand gesture you want to make, you know, then do it deliberately and make sure it's seen um, if, it, if it needs to be seen. If they're just sort of random waving about, then you know, keep them to yourselves uh, below the camera. Um, moving along, let's see if I can find the next one. Presentation slides. Um, well, the best presentation slides anyway, in a regular setup, you know, your PowerPoint or whatever, um, are slides that are clear and simple. Simple and impactful. Too many people have too much information on the slide. They're trying to show you a book or a page and then they read the information or you don't get a chance to read it. So what's the point? Um, Apple are very good at presentations. So whether it's Steve Jobs in the past or, um, you know, more recent executives and Apple representatives, you know, their rule is just put one key number on the screen. You know, 64%. For Apple, that might be you know, market penetration. For you, it might be something about your business, but just something clear and simple. That's a good tip anyway. And I think that when it comes to virtual presentations, the rule is underlined and even more important. So keep your slides even more clear and even more simple. And then there's a the question whether you use them or not. Um, in a regular presentation, the audience is seeing you standing there and they've got the slides in the background. And very often I use kind of uh, bullet point slides or slides, slides that simply just set the tone or illustrate what I'm talking about. And that's fine because they can choose to look at me and that's just wallpaper. So it doesn't really do any harm. But if you're screen sharing, if you're switching away from your face-to-face -face connection and going to screen sharing so that you can show them a slide, make sure it's worth losing your personal connection with them in order to go to screen sharing. And if you think about it, uh, depending on your particular presentation, your regular slides are probably not that relevant to, to be used if it means that you've got to use them uh, and lose that face-to-face -face contact. So we, we need to have a trade-off. Now, of course, if you do need to use uh, screen sharing, and sometimes we do, in fact, only two weeks ago, I gave a, a webinar about cash flow planning and I was showing a spreadsheet and how the spreadsheet worked. So clearly I, I had to go to the, the, the spreadsheet and put it onto my screen. Clearly that has to happen. So yes, use uh, screen sharing when necessary, uh, but only when necessary. And make sure that the, the files, the screen that you want to share is ready to go. Again, it's a bit unprofessional if you say, oh, just give me a minute as you search through your file directory, trying to find the thing that you want to bring up on screen, have them ready. And then finally, just have a practice, have a think about how you want to transition from screen sharing to um, face to face so that you do it in a more fluent way you're not spending too long with people only looking at the screen or too long looking at you when they do need to see the screen so it's a bit of a an art i think to getting that balance right um, and so i think that's actually uh, yeah I, i've moved into my final point there uh, about presentation slides and screen sharing so think carefully about screen sharing and with that, I will end um, my 10 top tips for virtual pitching. And I look forward to any comments, questions you have. Thank you.